And here we are again, folks. I want to admit something, which is that I proudly displayed on Instagram my plaque from YouTube, which congratulates the Stevo's Wild Ride podcast for passing 1 million subscribers. Of course, if I'm honest, I already had a second channel which had just over 900,000 subscribers when I changed the name to Stevo's Wild Ride Podcast, but everybody I ran it by said, hey, a million's a million. So our podcast is a hit. We've taken uh, a couple weeks off. We went every other week, but I think now we're going back to every week. And holy shit, do we have some incredible guests lined up. Wow, I really think that we're gonna just keep building steam. But first, let's just get into this. It's one of my dearest friends in comedy, a guy who's a big time movie star and just an all around great dude. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Swardson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you find that people often want to call you Nick Schwartzen? Yeah, I've heard everything. I've heard Schwartzen. I've heard Schartzen. Schwartzman. I've heard fucking dildo scientist. Yeah, I've dude. heard every butchering. I've heard it all, man. So this pad so, that you're in, it looks like the same pad that you've been in for years. Is that not right? No, this is not the one that you've been to in L.A. I'm in Minnesota. Oh, shit. And yeah, I've been here for two months. I'm in the basement of a Foot Locker. <laughs> nice, dude. I was shopping when all this went down, and they just said, get under, get down. <laughs> and I'm fucking here. Well, I think, uh, <laughs> I think you've got a style, dude, and, and, uh, and I like it. So, dude, um, thank you for doing this. Uh, yeah, of course. Not, love you, dude. You know. Yeah, I love you so much, man. Like I'm such a fan, and also, dude, you've just uh, you've been a supporter of me doing comedy since the very beginning. Before I even knew I was really doing comedy, you were like reached out. You were like, man, I hear you're doing comedy, man. If there's anything I can do to help, and that just like meant so much, you know. Yeah, of course, man. I was super proud of you too. I mean, you came over to my crib. And we talked about it, and. Yeah, you you were fucking great, man. It was awesome. I remember you were like, "I'm tired of shoving sh shoving shit up my asshole." <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to do stand up and fucking. Well, just not it's funny, dude. I remember it a little bit differently. I remember that when I went over to your house, your apartment. It was like a condo apartment kind of thing, and yeah. and uh, I was like, I was in in despair, dude, because at the time Knoxville was uh, filming this bad grandpa movie. And, yeah, and I was like, I was, I was just, I didn't know what was going on with it. I, I, I found out about it like the rest of us jackass guys, found out about it from uh, all these entertainment websites saying Paramount Pictures um, buys all the domain names for Jackass Four, and then and, and Jackass Four Bad Grandpa, and this. And I was just like, wait, huh? Like, they're, like how am I, why am I finding out about a Jackass movie like this? And then we went on to learn what it was, but the initial shock was like, fuck, Knoxville was making a jackass movie without us, now we're the Jackson 4. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh my God, and then I remember too, thinking like, good, well they gotta have us in there, and so I was like, trying to write ideas to write myself into it. I was like, oh, well, I'll do this, well, I'll do that, and they just like, yeah. it wasn't getting anywhere, and then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I was like, you know what? Fuck it, man. All these things that I wrote to try to get into Bad Grandpa are so dope. I'm going to go reach out to Nick Swords and I'm going to go see if I can meet up with him and say, Nick, dude, I've got all these great cameo ideas. Fuck, get me in a movie, dude. <laughs> I'll, shove, I'll shove shit up my butt. I remember one of the ideas was like... Uh, like some kind of a butt chug wheatgrass bicycle machine that <laughs> yeah, would like. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> it was like. I remember <laughs> that whole conversation. I just wasn't sure if I could say it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, so I didn't want to bring up all the Johnny shit. I would tell you be like, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> it's all good, man. And like. Oh, was that okay. the first time you guys had met? No, God, no. We met fucking. No. Uh, we met way before that. And Nick is like. Uh, 
you got to explain how you are such a diehard fan of skateboarding. He's can- yeah, I grew up a fucking a huge fan. I was always awful at it. <laughs> I was so bad. It's one, that's like one of the worst things when you like worship something and you just. If I, I was just. I tried, dude, and it just it didn't work. But I always, uh, you know, I fucking love skate. I just all I do is watch skate videos and shit, and I know a ton of skaters. It's fucking great, man. Yeah, you do. I think we met at. Uh among other times at the Fantasy Factory, the Rob Durdick thing. Yeah, I feel okay. like we saw each other there. Uh, yeah. I mean, anything skateboard related, it's like Nick Swords in, in, the, in the scene. He's in the picture. My first tattoo I got was with the Plan B guys. Nice, oh, dude. Wow. With, uh, when we were in Hawaii, the Plan B skate team, and we uh, a handful of us got tattoos, Sheckler and everything. We just had such a fun time. I mean, skaters are kind of like comics where not many people can do what we do. And so it's like, I don't know, there's some kind of bond there where it's just, you know, and we, we, and we just don't give a fuck either. Yeah. So it's just a, it's Dude, just you, fun. you are pretty good at not giving a fuck, it seems. It's, uh, yeah, this is one of my tattoos I always loved. Zero fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I love one it. Of my, one of my favorite Steve-O moments ever is, uh, like, I would go on fucking... Benders of alcohol that were just unreal. Two bottles of vodka a day, just fucking gayonzo. And I would get so crazy. And then one time I was at an after hours and me and some dude got into this thing and we took uh, Sharpies and drew dartboards <laughs> on our chest. And then we used metal darts and played fucking darts on each other's <laughs> chest. And there's blood just but but fucking buttons of blood all over the place. It's so gross. And I texted Steve-O, and I go, dude, I just fucking played metal darts on my chest and sent him a picture, and he goes, I am so proud of you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Did you do anything to, like, did you have any face protection in case a dart went as, no. Oh, no, that's good. Nice. Did you guys ever drink yeah. together? <laughs> no, I have. That's good. We, we did not drink together because I was sober when we first met. Okay. Yeah, on, you were sober by the time we met, and I was like back and forth. I would go through. Yeah, and 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 I remember too because I was just starting to like go to the L.A. comedy clubs regularly. It was I was just getting into it. I had no idea that this was gonna be like a fucking a new career. But uh, as soon as I started going to the comedy clubs, it was actually a friend of mine said, "Hey, I know Nick Swardson," and he said, "Please." pass his number on to you because he wants to be there to help you out with your comedy. Super cool. And I was just like, what the fuck, dude? How dope is that? And uh, super killer. Yeah, it's hard as shit. And it's fucking a crazy time now. So how is your calendar affected by all this? Ah, oh, well, dude, I mean... What calendar? <laughs> dude, this is... I, I don't, I don't want to tell the same stories yeah. over and over, but fucking... <clears throat> I've been doing this comedy club grind for for just about exactly 10 years. I, I did my first... Uh, my first comedy club, like, you know, special engagement was at the fucking Off the Hook Comedy Club in, like, Marco Island, yeah. Florida. <laughs> and, uh, and that was November of 2010. So, you know, just about 10 years. And, and dude, the comedy club grind, for people who don't know, like, your it's like dinner theater. So they're, they're, they get people in, they make them buy fucking two drinks, like two fucking items on the menu, watch the show, which is kind of distracting because there's waiters going all around, dropping checks, serving like, you know, while, like while the show's going on. It's a fucking nightmare. Well, that club that you're talking about isn't technically a club. It's a fucking <laughs> seafood restaurant. <laughs> right, so, for sure. It's, it's, a, it's a great club. It's some, you know, these, some of these places, they just have like a comedy thing there. Right. This place, it works, so I've done it. It's super sure. fun. But it is a, a fucking restaurant, so right. you're trying to talk about diarrhea while someone's eating shrimp scampi, <laughs> and like you're like, right. just sitting there going like, hundred oh, percent. So it's fucking insane. And and, and the, the thing about it is that they their model in there is you, they eat dinner, they watch the show, they get the fuck out, and they're replaced. And so you got to do the whole thing twice, like every time. So and on top of that, you got to do it on Thursday. You got to do it on Friday. Friday. You got to do it on yeah. Saturday. You got to do it on Sunday. I mean, dude, for years I did this Thursday through Sunday, six shows per weekend. And it was just like, fuck, 
ultimately I said, okay, dude, I got to have a life. Now I got, you know, my girl. So I'm only going to do two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. It's still a fucking backbreaker, you know? And yeah. the week before this shutdown started, like... My agent calls up and he says, hey, dude, I got to tell you, dude, fucking you're graduated. Fucking no more comedy clubs, dude. You're you're selling out like way ahead so far in advance of these comedy. It's just not I'm not going to look at any more comedy club deals. Now you're in theaters and the next fucking week comedy ends. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking asshole you did it I know but the thing is Steve you did it dude but uh, oh I mean God. so that's how that's how it affected me dude like I was just fucking there you know and um it, like yeah that's rough dude nobody wants us to really draw a lot of attention to it but like it's common knowledge that paramount pictures greenlit actual jackass 4 with the whole jackson 5 you know of, oh, of course wow. of course minus ryan dunn uh so it's going to be the the jackson 8 <laughs> the jackass 8 uh so um you know we, we just started shooting that and then the fucking that got shut down you know I was on the set of fucking Jackass 4 when I got the call from my agent. You graduated from theaters, and now all of it went away, you know? Holy because, shit. And I say it went away. I mean, who knows? But, dude, I saw that fucking AMC Theaters is, like, maybe going to declare bankruptcy. Like, yeah. so, there's not, so we're going to not have fucking movie theaters anymore? Kind of sucks when you know. just got a movie deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucking brutal. Thank God they pulled up plug on Jackass Four because you guys are so worried about germs and touching. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But, uh, but it, if there's one movie that can survive <laughs> this fucking thing, it's the guys jizzing and bleeding in each other's eyes. <laughs> right. God. I know. I was a little bit surprised when when uh, we were when we became part of the shutdown. But, but in any case, like, I mean, whatever, dude. Well, can, first of all, congratulations on the theaters. That's a fucking huge deal, dude. Oh, I will dude. never forget when I had the same conversation with my agent. And it's just so, it's so awesome, dude. It's one of the coolest feelings ever. Well, thank it's really you. really great. Thank so you. congrats, bud. Thank you so much, dude. We were fucking fighting for that for so long because, like, what, what, what even we didn't understand. And when I say we, sorry, this is my co-host, Scott Randolph. He's also my tour manager, my producer of everything. Um, should, should have done that sooner. Um, but, uh, I mean, fuck, dude. The the leap. It's like comedy clubs end here and theaters start. Boy, there's such a gap in between. You got to jump so far to make the leap from comedy clubs to theaters just because the business yeah. of it is so fucking weird. But, uh, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. And and I don't really fucking care. I was going to sleep last night. I told you before we started. Oh, uh, you see, Nick says, how are you? I said, I said, I'm irritable. I'm grumpy. I fucking got, I'm tired. And uh, just being a bitch. But as I explained, <laughs> I made this video yesterday. And it's the most humiliating fucking video that I've ever made. It's called Six Things I Am Totally Humiliated to Admit. Right? And I just fucking, <laughs> I just loaded it up with the most embarrassing shit. And uh, it's just awful. But it's the most entertaining fucking thing. And I couldn't sleep because I'm all excited about it. I'm like just so fucking jazzed. Excited about this video. I was up till five in the morning just rolling back and forth. I'm all excited. And I was thinking as I went to bed, you know, here we are on... Like, if, if if not the brink, we're actually in a great depression, you know? Like, the fucking world just collapsing around us. And, right. and my livelihood, like, I was just about right fucking there, and everything was taking off. Everything was coming together. I was about to have the biggest heyday of my fucking career, <laughs> and it just kind of went away. And I was just laying in bed thinking... I really don't fucking care because you know what? I can, whether there's an, an economy or not, whether there's a fucking AMC movie theaters or not, whether there people can go to a com, I can make fucking videos and be this excited. And all I, I don't even fucking care about money. I don't care about anything except look at me, look at me and watch my fucking videos. And I can still do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. And, and that's a good way. To, that's a good way to look at it. And at least, like you don't have one of those murder hornets on your penis. You <laughs> Not, yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not oh, yet. That's you... gonna be. Uh, that's gonna be video number two. Dude, I, I can't. I, I gotta. I, I can give away my own ideas. 
but I should not be giving. I, it's my fucking idea. I said I, I wanted to fucking put like a, a like a fucking blow dart gun kind of thing, you know, and put the, the yeah. put, put this like tube like up my asshole right. and have him like blow a fucking hornet into my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! When did you come God. up with this? I mean, dude. not a fucking murderer. <laughs> 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 Murdering your butthole, dude. Nick's disgusted with me. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know, dude. I think that would be the idea. I, mean, I saw a guy get stung with one of those, and he fucking like collapsed. He was just like, I, I can't handle this. Dude, I saw a guy that holy said, shit! You got a guy got stung with one of those murder. I horns? guess he has a YouTube channel where he fucking goes around and gets stung by different bees, and like he said, he he took it out. Put it on his arm and just immediately yeah. swelled up like a baseball. I mean, I don't. Oh, I heard that. Fuck. I heard that murder hornet's not even that fucking bad, dude. Like yeah, a but bullet for your ant. butthole. Yeah, inside your butthole, dude. <laughs> That's anything is bad inside. Your <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any bite of any kind <laughs> is like great in your butthole. right. No, I get it, dude. It feels like a really sensitive area, from what my I've experienced. <laughs> right. With um, all uh, the things I've eaten. I get it, dude. My concern is not about if it's sensitive or if it's going to be awful, but it's that the fucking, the coverage, dude. Like, you blow, like, the, you blow, you're not going to be able to see the hornet enter the asshole because it's in this tube, which is in your asshole. So it's kind of like watching nothing happen, dude. Like, where's the footage? How do you cover this event? You can just have... Here's what you do. <laughs> Here's what you do. You get... A beehive and put a clear tube in the beehive and then it goes into your ass. Watch them walk slowly <laughs> into your fucking butthole. Yeah. Right. And then you just watch every like the party start. Either do like a honey and a honey enema or something. Yeah. And then play some fucking music. Get a B DJ. Get a BJ. And then fucking all the party in the asshole. Put oh some my God. Watch your see, see, that's why Nick Swardson is a huge, hugely successful entertainer right there. You're just coming up with shit on the fly, dude. Yeah. So, dude, um, hey, I want to say, too, real quick, because I promised that I would, that here yeah. we are in this van. We, like, we fucking blew a fuse on my fucking van, so we're just going to get sweatier and sweatier as we go. But not to worry, because... Is it, like we're making progress in here. This is our fucking traveling podcast studio, and I was I was looking for mic arms, right, so that we don't have to hold the fucking mic. And I'm just checking them all out, going down the rabbit holes, and then I finally decided on this one from this company, OC Whites, and I ordered them just like any other fucking asshole. They get back to me right away. They said, "Hey, the wall mount that you ordered fucking isn't actually compatible with the mic arms that you ordered." And before we send this order, we want to make and I was like, wait, what? You guys are looking out for me like that, and I'm just any old schmuck? I said, dude, I got to tell you, man. I'm fucking ordered these for my podcast, and out of the gate, it's a fucking hit. You know, I'm just reeling off the people I've, I'm getting on the podcast, just bragging about how well it's doing. And the guy said, oh, fuck, man, that sounds great. Dude, I'll overnight you these arms on my dime if you mention them on the podcast. And, and I'm like, go. fucking hey, dude, look at these. I mean, there's a lot of people just listening to the audio, but just trust me, these fucking mic arms are dope. And that that's why I, I fucking shout out. I promised it. I fucking love it. I called that guy right before. I said, dude, we're eight minutes until we get on with Nick Swardson. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> yeah. So, dude, yeah. let's talk. About that was one of the that was one of the best shout outs I've ever. How smooth was that? I didn't even <laughs> know where he was going. Well, stand. dude, I, I fucking am thrilled, man. And dude, wait until you see like uh, by next week we'll have this fucking sign with the, the podcast logo on this fucking shaggy fur behind me, and it's a ha <laughs> halo light logo. <laughs> it's gonna be all his pubes yeah. on the background too. <laughs> <laughs> right, my, my podcast dude is going to be furious with me for that shout out, but I don't even care. But in any case, now, I, I, I've got a bunch of questions that I want to ask you, Nick, okay? Okay, all right. Well, should we also, let's just tell people before we started. I don't yeah, you've got a movie coming on, out on it was Netflix. On Mike. Actually, no, I don't, I don't care about that. <laughs> I care about the pubic hair that Steve-O is saving up to be a Sasquatch. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I, so, I have... so our goal right now to come out of this fucking quarantine is the theater tour starting Pube Squatch. Yeah. Which will be fucking Steve-O. Oh, dude, this is that now, like, I, I, I have this habit of just giving away 
ideas on the podcast. I like the idea that it's like the people who are really dedicated to listening to the podcast and all of them, you know, they're like fucking diehard fans and they deserve to get that extra juicy inside scoop of things that they yeah. probably shouldn't know. Which is why maybe I'll tell you that I've given away a bunch of ideas and, and here's one that I have not divulged. You'd think I'm crazy for giving away my ideas the way I do. But they're so crazy, nobody's going to copy them, so screw it. And Nick's reaction to what I'm about to tell him is amazing. But first, let's talk about this pandemic. I hear that now they're going to keep L.A. County closed down, stay at home for another three months. Oh, man. Well, thank God for Postmates. Because you don't have to leave your house to get whatever the hell you want. And you can support your local businesses, which is so important to do. And I'm such a fan of Postmates. And I'm grateful for them sponsoring this show. We are giving my listeners $100 in free delivery for your first seven days. So that what that means is you download the Postmates app. You use the code WILDRIDE. That's WILDRIDE on the Postmates app, and you get $100 of free delivery for a limited time. Okay, so hurry up and do that right now and support your local businesses. I love Postmates, and if you don't have it, you're nuts. So get it and use the code WILDRIDE for $100 in free delivery. Now, get ready to see Nick Swartzen very disappointed in me. <laughs> I'm getting fucking breast implants, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the people only listening, if only they could see the disgust on Nick Swartzen's face. What size? It's never disgust. It's, it's never disgust. disgust. <laughs> It's it's more just pondering. Yeah, what size? What size you think what you color? want to get? What color? <laughs> what color? Well, here's the thing. It's not, it's not that I want to permanently disfigure my body, okay? It's that I want to I need to have this experience. I need to know mm. what it's like. And more more importantly, the experiment is to determine how soon or not I have to fucking get rid of them. Can, can I handle it? Can I make it a year? Ever do I say, like, it's going to be one fucking year with real sweet titties, and, right. and, and I got to make, make it for that year. Like, maybe it's a bet. I got to make it for a year. Because I heard about a guy, and I don't know if this story is true, but I heard about a guy who, who did it on a bet for, for, for one year, and then at the end of that one year, he wasn't willing to part with them. <laughs> he kept them. I don't know if that's true. It's probably not. But I don't know. I mean, why? Why would that not be true? I mean, if you if you got into if you had tits for a fucking year, yeah, you would have some kind of attachment. Like, you you can, attachment to it. You can jerk off you and feel your like, own tits at the same time. Yeah, you'd come on your own tits. Right. Same right. Body. I don't know. I mean, this this and I'm I'm gonna fucking have, I'm gonna get a dick. Like I'm gonna have. Uh, a baseball tied to a string, which is attached to wax on my eyebrow, get whacked so that the fucking baseball goes flying and pulls off the eyebrow. And then in its place, I'm going to have a gigantic eyebrow shaped dick tattooed where the, like in the place of the eyebrow. And the dick is going to be shooting out cum, which will land on my fucking it's perfect teardrops. But they're going to be <laughs> cum drops coming out of the corner of my eye. And that's also an experiment to see I mean, how, how long do I last with it? Do I go how, like do I go racing immediately to the fucking tattoo laser removal, or do I like fucking when the eyebrow grows back? Do I shave it off and keep it shaved to keep it on display because I'm so proud? I don't know what the experience is going to be. I have to find out. Or do you run for mayor? <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, or do you make it a a bold choice, there. right? But without so is the, so the the hair is gonna be gone or it's gonna grow it's, back it, it, and you have a hairy penis. It, ooh, <laughs> a hairy penis! Uh -huh. I never even thought of that. Uh, the idea yeah. is for the dick to actually be bigger than the eyebrow, so it would technically be a hairy penis. You can shave half the <laughs> eyebrow, so you just keep All a right. little hair patch. Or I could just make it make, be really careful to make the actual outline of the eyebrows so that it's a 
properly hairy. Yeah. A furry dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Right. I, I think it's great. And then if you go that way... I'll get a pussy. I'll get a pussy in each one of my armpits. Nice. Each one of my armpits will be a full working labia. Dude, nice. But enough about yeah. me, Nick. Enough about me. Let, I, I, I do want to talk about your Netflix movie because we watched it yesterday, and you're my. You and Rob Schneider stood out to me as the funniest guys in it. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I. I uh... Yeah, I, it was fun, man. It was a fucking blast. It's fun doing rated R shit. You know what I mean? Right. It's just, it's just fun when you can say whatever you want. You don't have to like worry Dude, about it. The sex scene. The, 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 there's a threesome sex scene where <laughs> yeah. where this. It's so fucking funny. This one person is sort of being left out like a little bit neglected in this thing she keeps trying to get in to the to the fucking party and each attempt to come in like there's like some thrashing like erotic motion where she just gets kicked in the head and it's so violent she's trying to get some action and she just gets her ass beat like again and again every time she got fucking nailed i i just laughed harder and harder dude i loved it when you guys are doing yeah. movies like that, are you guys just laughing the whole time in the background? Or is it pretty serious, or is it just a fucking big party? It's uh, it's pretty bad. I laugh a lot. It, it, I've I've been told I've ruined so many takes, man, because I'll try to focus, but I improvise a lot, and especially if you're with somebody that improvises a lot. Like I did a movie, Thirty Minutes or Less. Oh my god, McBride, that's the one where you Danny said McBride. That sorry for interrupting. I love that movie. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. But, dude, when you Fine. said, what was the line that you said? Oh, dude, remember, like, in seventh grade, and, like, we worshipped Satan for the whole year? <laughs> I mean, I forget what the exact line was, but that was my, that I fucking howled, because I'm a big fan of Satan myself. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, I mean, that just spoke to my... Who's not? He's right. Satan, dude. Oh, my God. So, but, yeah, that movie I fucking loved, and uh, it was so much improv it with me and Danny McBride we play like the villains in the movie and so it's if you're with somebody you don't know what they're gonna say I just start laughing Dude, he's I, genius. I always just like trying trying to make the other person laugh yeah. like Reno 911 was all script like improvised so we were fucking cracking up non-stop our whole goal was to make the other person laugh and do the weirdest shit you could or say the weirdest shit you could <laughs> so I'm I'm always bad at breaking up and laughing dude i, I love it man <clears throat> and, and that's like the rule on saturday night live is that it's like super not cool to fucking break character and and crack up right like that's like a part yeah. it's considered a party foul well yeah but it's like dude that's live right i mean a fucking movie they can go cut all right we gotta do that again <clears throat> you know, when you're live, I mean, t the funniest is the people that have dropped f bombs and shit on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that I think it's the rule now, but it was back in the day. If you said fuck, you were immediately fired. Oh, okay, like there was no, there was no way around it. If you said fuck on the air, you were fired. They fired a couple people just, and even if it's on accident, I mean, I every time I do a talk show or something, I say fuck so much. That uh, I, I'm always like, oh, I'm gonna fucking say something. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna slip and, up. And, and it's like I, I assume that you probably get asked this all the time, but like you were never a Saturday Night Live cast member, right? Or, no. Right. Yet you're a part of this like modern age rat pack of Saturday Night Live alum, like Adam Sandler's crew with fucking. David Spade, Rob Schneider, Adam Sandler, and like, how do you get into that pack? Like, you're in all their movies. It's, it's fucking so, epic. I know. It's so bizarre. It's so random. I mean, the cool thing was, and what kind of helped me is that I grew up watching those dudes. So my high school was watching Saturday Night Live back then because it was Sandler, Farley, Spade, Schneider, and everybody, Phil Hartman, Chris Rock, fucking all those dudes wait chris rock so was saturday night yeah. live mm -hmm. fuck how, yeah rock was on snl for yeah years talk about fucking so, meteoric rise dude i don't even remember him being on saturday night live oh dude when you look at like the cast back then it was insane yeah but i just grew up on that sensibility so like happy gilmore and billy madison tommy boy so when i started hanging out with those guys and i met them i, I already had like their mindset was already 
like ingrained in me, you know what I mean? So right. it wasn't hard for to write jokes for them because I knew their voice. I knew what was what they could pull off and what was their sensibility. You say so it wasn't it, hard to write jokes work. for them. So did you start working for them as a writer? I, they gave me the script for Grandma's Boy. Adam Sandler did. And he goes, we have this movie. It's a PG-13 romantic comedy. We want it to not be that. So they go, if you can just write whatever the fuck you want, make it crazy, rate it R. Speaking of writing crazy ass shit, did you know that I'm a New York Times bestseller? My book, Professional Idiot, is nuts. And every copy at stevo.com is autographed, plus every autograph looks just like a penis. Yeah, I'm very careful to make that the case. And this book is insane. All right. I'm going to just start with page one. Okay. It says it was March 1996 and I was in jail. The Orange County Correctional Facility in Orlando, to be exact. A couple months earlier, I'd gotten my second DUI in less than a year. I was pulled over for swerving badly while making an illegal U-turn through a red light. I tried to tell the officer I wasn't drunk, just tired. The arrest report actually reads, Defendant declined roadside sobriety tests, stating he'd prefer to take a nap. And I have the actual arrest report. Uh, I'm telling you, I don't waste anybody's time with this book. It's nuts. And that's why it's a New York Times bestseller. And I'm so proud of it for being like a rise and fall redemption story of addiction. That it's meaningful for me to get it out there. And that's why I sign every single copy. And it's loaded with shocking felony arrests and fucked up drug abuse and perverted groupie sex. I mean, it's really a story of sex, drugs, and rock and roll because that's all I ever wanted. And then it turned out to be kind of a, an inspiring redemption story. In any case, go to stevo.com and get yourself an autographed copy. Um, yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Cool. Let's get back to it. And you could write yourself in the movie. And I'm like, okay. So I'd already written the movie Malibu's Most Wanted, so I knew how to write oh, a movie. Genius. <laughs> so then I fucking wrote Grandma's Boy, a draft of it, and they were like, yeah, holy shit. We love this. Wow. And then I wrote Bench Warmers with Sandler for Spade and Schneider and writing for those guys. And then I started writing for Sandler, and then I would write, help Adam write his talk show jokes and all that shit. So I just started writing for anybody who wanted it out of those guys. They're like, hey, do you have anything for me? Epic. Let me let Scott jump in there because he is such a fan of Grandma's Boy. It's all I could talk about yesterday. Now, who, who wrote the joke, you know, please sit on my face or uh, the Charlie Chaplin g gave me a hand job or what, what you wrote? <laughs> So fucking funny, dude. So dope, dude. I yeah, I, I created the whole robot guy and wrote all of his dialogue. And that was one thing where I got <laughs> thrown off the set because I was laughing every fucking time the guy spoke. That guy's and good. Did, and did the robot voice. And every single time, I I could not hold it because... It would it would crush me, dude. Anytime you'd be like, sit on my face, you, yeah. you, you. Just <laughs> eating the sushi. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you write those jokes just for him or like? I did... created the character and then we had to audition all these people and nobody really understood. They kind of did, but it was really tricky because I was like, no, he is a real guy, but he just zaps off into robot world. And then comes back. So it's almost like a nervous tick. So it was hard for people to kind of grasp it. And we had looked at a lot of actors. Then finally that guy was recommended. Joel David Moore was recommended by somebody. They were like, you got to see this dude. And he was almost too old for the part. And But he was the only guy that really, really got it. And then also got the part of being dramatic where he would... There's a scene where he's like crying and breaking down and stuff like that. So he's a great actor. So he was able to do everything. Yeah, and the same with and, like Kevin Nealon's character. Did you write all that too? Yeah, Nealon, that was all. Dude, yeah, unbelievable. Was, ta Taylor, Taylor made for... Dude, yeah, I Mr. worship Chico. Kevin Nealon, dude. He is he's so the best. Fucking, he's the fucking funniest. He's un just unbelievable. Him and Norm Macdonald are two like old school SNL dudes that are like so 
funny, man. I remember at one of the roasts when they were trying to roast Norm Macdonald, he just kept reading a paper and would like look up and be like, eh, whatever, and just go back to read it. I thought that was, nobody got him. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's all about Kevin Nealon for me, dude. But, okay, so you yeah, just Yeah, Nealon's talk- brilliant. He's fucking great. He's such a nice dude. You've done shows with him, For right? sure, for sure. Now, Have you done his Laugh Factory show? Like the one, yeah, the, 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 I got a huge bit out of it. It was yeah, like I, I did I, great. I did a set and then he asked me questions and I got a fucking huge bit out of it, dude. I was stoked. But dude, I just like really I thought that my big question for you, or one of them anyway, was gonna be what's been more lucrative for you, stand up comedy or acting? But now after you've just reeled off all of this writing that you've done, I'm starting to think that it's actually writing that's the like, like of the three, how does it break down? You don't have to give me numbers, but I just want percentages. <laughs> and numbers. <laughs> what is the percentage of a trillion dollars? <laughs> um, no, I would say probably stand-up. Because stand-up, that's the great thing about stand-up. And that's why you were smart, because it's like, not only, you know, you have so many stories to tell, and you have such a great fan base, and it just... It's such a unique thing, and like, stand up is always there, except for right now. <laughs> so right. this is the only time where all the comedians I've talked to were like, "Oh, we always thought we would have stand up, and now this is fucking shit." But uh, but forever it was like the Hollywood shits Hollywood, you know. So it's like writing gigs or acting gigs; they kind of come wherever. But stand up is always consistent. Right. It was something I could always do. For, I've done it twenty five years. I was 25 years this February. So that's something I've done from start to finish, you know, rain or shine. Sure. Where Hollywood, you just don't know what your next movie is. You don't know what your next project is. So, you know, obviously it pays good money, but stand-up is something that, you know, I can always do. I can quit Hollywood any time and just have my fans and my brain well, right. I mean, dude, fuck you, around. You, you, know? you kill it in stand-up, and uh, if if I'm right... Because, I mean, stand-up will burn you out, dude. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty... Non- It'll burn you out. It's Maybe a pretty gnarly definitely grind. breaks. And, and if, I, if I'm correct, I feel like you've kind of, like, hit stand-up really hard, but then, like, you'll back off. You'll do it, like, you know, here and there. Like, you know, like, is it, is it sort of how much, like, how busy you are in movies, like, will sort of dictate how much time you break off for stand-up? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's what it what it's hard is is shifting gears. So when you're writing a movie, uh, I just put all my energy into that. So my brain is tailored to that movie and writing for people and getting those specific jokes out. So my brain, it's hard to switch over and go like, oh, stand up bit, stand up bit, stand up bit. And the hardest part, I had a sketch show on <coughs> Comedy Central called Nick Swartzen's Pretend Time. And it is the fucking most insane show. I don't know if you've seen any of it, Steve-O, but you would lose your mind. I'll send you some of the sketches. Yeah, dude. And that took up two, three years of my life of just sketches. And I quit stand-up. I didn't do stand-up for over a year, about a year and a half, because my brain was so dialed into writing sketches and other shit that I couldn't make the, I couldn't make the switch. So it was really bizarre, but... You would love this show. There was a sketch that I couldn't believe made it to air called um, Suck Your Own Dick Abs. <laughs> and, it, and it was an infomercial about a band that you put over your head and over your knees and you get ripped by trying to suck your own dick. And I sent it to my agent to see if Jim Carrey would be the infomercial dude. And uh, my agent was like, he's not going to fucking do this, man. It's about sucking your own dick or whatever. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> but that was just some of the shit that was on there. It was fucking insane, dude. You would, oh, you would love it. Dude, I love it. Now, I remember, and, and thank you for this, too. You invited me to, uh, to be a part of a, a show that you put on at some, like, weird, weird theater that I'd never even heard of. But it was, like, a beautiful theater right in the middle of West Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, I think you had Kevin Neal in there. It was just like a star studded ass fucking Nick Swardson and Friends comedy night. And I don't know how often you did that show, but but I was just thrilled. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? I feel like I had like a 10 minute set to do for you. And I was just thinking, man, oh, dude, I want to kill. I want to kill. And I remember I decided on, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do my fucking bit where I tell. 
like 100% true stories about the fucking most famous people I've done cocaine with. Right? <laughs> and, and I did this bit fucking routinely on tour, and it was just always a killer. People, I'm like, oh, dude, you guys get ready to be excited, man. It's time for celebrity cocaine stories with Steve-O, and people go wild. But I remember the, the, that night when I did that there, I, like, it was the first time where I felt like, wow, maybe this is uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I don't know. And, and I wonder, I wonder if, it, I don't know if you were even like, you know, in the wings or if you were even like, you know, uh, aware of the bit I was doing. But I was like, oh, dude, I hope I'm not rubbing Nick the wrong way doing this at his show. I don't think I, and I was really conflicted about that bit in general. And I remember when I went to go tape my next comedy special, my agent said, hey, let's go ahead and leave celebrity cocaine stories out of this special. It just doesn't feel like it fits in. And I, and I was like, oh, all right, fucking, I'll leave it out. But then I regretted it. And I was like, oh, fuck. And so I went and filmed it. I put it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, sick. Yeah. I, I remember that show. I would, I'd only did a handful of them. But the whole point of those shows is... I mean, I'm like so scatterbrained, so I'm running the thing, but I do remember you doing that bit. I thought it was hilarious. And it, <laughs> though that theater, it's for those of you out there, it's just a small theater. It's only a couple hundred people, but um, you can do whatever you want. So I just, everybody just fucks around. So there's no pressure, you know, to be like, oh, I got to do whatever. It's just, I just want people to just do anything. And if it fucking eats it, it's even funnier, dude. I have fucking bombed at that theater. <laughs> I would, I would do other people's shows and, um, I remember I walked out on one of those shows and I go, um, hey, uh, I just was at a restaurant and I had this meal and it was the best meal I've ever had. And the owner came over and he goes, hey, thanks for coming and having dinner here. And I go, that's the best meal I've ever had. It was so good. Tomorrow I'm going to eat my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I opened and it bombed horribly. And then I just proceeded to fucking bomb so bad. Yeah, so, that's like, bad. I don't care, that's, but you didn't bomb it. It was fucking great. Oh, no, I don't think I'm, I'm I bombed. Glad you, I don't think no, I bombed. It was I, just, I just felt that it was like, you know, it was the first time I felt like, ooh. Because I remember I told Bill Burr about about it, and he was like, oh, man, dude, you don't, you don't want to fucking do that, dude. He's like, you don't want to be like... <laughs> <laughs> Bill Burr said, he, "Bill Burr said you don't want to be like fucking Kathy Griffin, where she makes everybody fucking into her material, and then nobody wants to be around her." <laughs> like, uh, oh, so he's talking about like if you're then, doing cocaine with somebody, right, 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 like like sort of burn, like uh, you know, uh, right, blow, yeah, blowing, blowing up someone's spot, out. you know, like calling them out for it, putting them on, throwing them under under the bus. Yeah, I can see why your agent won't want to do that on a special because it's like right. But then the that, thing, yeah, that's really dicey, dude, because people can be... Right. I've told stories about getting fucked up with people, and they're like, hey, if, what are you doing, dude? Right, but then, <laughs> like, oh, but then, yeah, right. but then I showed Bill Burr the video. Like, uh, I sent him a link, and he was like, oh, dude, that wasn't so bad, you know? Like, you made Kid Rock sound really cool. Like, it's like Lindsay Yeah, Lohan. as long as it's not, like, a horrible... You right. Know. It, was, it was, I think, like, I, I wait. I remember, too, because, like, with, like, my sober people, like, we, we all really care about, like, not doing harm to others, and if we, if we fuck up, going back and making it right. And we're, like, kind of touchy about all that. And, right. uh, like, my, my, uh, my sober community was kind of split down the middle, you know? A lot of people were like, come on, dude, it's fucking comedy. Like, who cares? There's no revelations here, you know? Like, you're talking, right. about, you're talking about people who are all 100% known to have had a history, plus the stories are so old. Like, fuck it. And then some other people were like, so I went with the people who said do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gotta do man that's my Just spiritual path <laughs> <laughs> but dude on the topic of getting fucked up and how people are somehow touchy about it a lot of the time like it's it's perplexing to me how much you just promote alcoholism and and i wonder how much of it is like oh that's just nick being like being goofy being nick and how much is it like you're really you know like do, do you ever the, the question is do right. you do you ever feel like like uh talking about getting loaded all day and drinking two bottles of vodka and how fucking you're so wasted that you piss your pants or whatever it is that that's gonna like get in the way or like or is it just you get a pass and and is it all just bullshit anyway? Well, 
that felt like 40 questions. Yeah, sorry. But I, can, but I can answer all of them. So I've always been a drinker. I started drinking. It's very like in, in the Midwest, it was like you just drink, you know what I mean? And so my first album was called Party. And that's like, I was a drinker, you know? And so the older I got, I would go on and off. So when I when I film a movie, I rarely drink. Maybe one or two, this is a couple stories, but it's rare. So, you know, I just start, I don't promote alcoholism, but I just have a good time with, I love drinking. I haven't drank for almost eight months. It'll be eight months. Wow. Oh, but, um, yeah, so like, I never had a problem with, you know, like drying out and you know when i would go and get fucking wild you know there were reckless moments and stuff like that and none of them are embellished at all but you know I, it's one of those things where every, everyone's different you know what i mean so i was somebody that i don't have an overhead i don't have a family i don't have you know so i would just go i was like peter pan i've been doing comedy <laughs> for fucking 25 well, years dude, you know <clears throat> you know you've been doing so comedy it's a blast. You know you've been doing comedy for a long fucking time when you say, my first album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm like fucking Ario Speedway or some shit, dude. Yeah, comedy albums. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. But yeah, so I've done, you know, I've gone to AA. I've, I've done all the stuff and, you know, it's just... I definitely do not promote or condone. Well, right. I mean, like, hey, everybody, everybody sure. drink two bottles of vodka. It's right. fucking promotes horrible. Is, promotes it's is so strong bad. Word. And I've ended up in the hospital many times. Promote and is a strong word. I, I take that back. And I'm not suggesting that you have a problem. This is not an intervention. <laughs> it's <laughs> I just, a, I just a think pubic it's hair intervention. I just think it's interesting because you find, like, uh, you know, I follow you, yeah. on, I follow you on social media, and there's just a lot of, of your humor that you, you really get a kick out of debauch fucking like a uh, drunken comedy I can only imagine I, mean, I can only imagine the fans that come to your comedy shows are pretty fucking hammered the whole time yeah people get blasted <laughs> dude I mean uh, you know I've spent so many years just going out and the drinking culture I mean I've had a blast dude I've had so much fun it's it's you know it's hard to promote it and I'm not promoting but you know there are you know, moments of just doing oh, a gig and then just fucking kicking it and like, you know, Florida being in Orlando and just drinking <laughs> for two weeks straight. It's fucking great. Hey, dude, I'll you, go home to Minnesota and just go to baseball games and get hammered. I mean, you know, for sure. Fun shit. You're talking but, to two sober alcoholics who have nothing but love for the glory days. I mean, we, yeah. we did whenever when it worked, it was fucking great and we loved it. Yeah, no, I, you know, but, you know, it's times that, you know, I've had, so. And, dude, you, you look know. fucking fantastic. Oh, uh, thanks, man. I mean, you really, yeah, you really been, do. Um, I know, I, I, uh, I look like shit in the movie, but. I, I, did, I, you, I definitely, you, you, definitely you definitely had some more weight on you in the movie. Yeah, I was coming off a show where I was a little thick and I was just like, oh, I'm not going to train for this part of an office worker. Well, <laughs> so dude, I, I like, mean. <laughs> Like uh, it, it it was noticeable, and right now you you look fucking awesome, dude. I remember when we went out to lunch one day, and uh, you said, "Dude, I fucking stopped eating dairy, and uh, all of a sudden it, I just feel so much better, dude. I fucking like my skin so much better, and I'm just I never want to touch dairy again." And uh, have you stuck with that? Yeah, I've been at dairy in over a decade. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, that was that was huge, man. That's like a real game changer in terms of I've worked on my diet for a long time. I mean, obviously everybody falls off with their diet, but I mean, for the most part, uh I I went in sick to some random juice bar in LA. Uh, Earth, Earth bar. bar. Yeah, we went there together. Yeah. yeah, we've been there together and the dude that was working there was like, "Hey, man." <laughs> He's like a white dude, dreadlocks. He's like, hey, man. Hey, why are you always sick, man? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking, just get sick. And he goes, no, it's not right, man. And he got all serious. It's not right, man. And I'm like, all right, dude, chill. And he's like, do you eat a lot of dairy? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, fucking cut that out, man. It's poison. And, I'm like, what are you, and I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, try it for two weeks, man. Try it for two weeks. And I was like, all right. And so I did. And immediately he goes, he, he said, he goes, watch two weeks, cold Turkey. I slept better. I had more energy. And then it's been 10 years. I fucking, I never get sick ever. I it just, everything is better. And I went back to this little fucking stoner, dude. I'm like, 
you changed my life. And he was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> He goes, you got any fucking coke? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, chill, dude. He's like the character but. in Grandma's Boy uh, that David Spade played. Dude, I, I'm still... <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm still tripping out on this this writing. Like, because he was saying... We just heard Nick say, I when I wrote grandma's really talking about writing entire movies did i hear you correctly like writing yeah, I, I was brought in to rewrite it so i wrote it rewrote it from page one and helped a script that had already existed but i i did a whole polish in terms of characters and the tone of it i, I mean the, the original script was like a broad comedy i just heard mailbox money that's all i right. Heard. i mean dude how does writing an entire fucking movie that goes out in theaters and fucking kills at the box office not generate more revenue for you than stand-up well grandma's boy didn't kill at the box office oh. it ate hot shit <laughs> yeah it's it like a fucking cult classic based fucking diarrhea it, <laughs> it costs like five million and it made like Four million in the theater. It was something like just maybe six. Shit. So it did huge on DVD, though, like gigantic. I remember the guy, one of the guys that ran Blockbuster was like, yeah, it's one of our most stolen movies. <laughs> nice. And uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, yeah, no, it's not cool. And I was like, oh, I mean, no, it's cool. And, and, okay, so what, what other movies did you write? Did you say that you wrote 30 minutes or less? No, uh-uh. So the first one I, I did was Malibu's Most Wanted. I wrote that original script. Okay. It was a movie called Suckas, and it was me and Jamie Kennedy as like a dumb and dumber. And then Warner Brothers bought it, retooled it for Jamie, and became Malibu's Most Wanted. But I had wrote the original script, and then Grandma's Boy, and then <coughs> co-wrote uh, Benchwarmers, and then um, I was a writer on Chuck and Larry, but wasn't credited. I just did like Punch Up. And then I had written, I was wrote Bucky Larson with Sandler and Covert. And then I've written three other scripts um, that didn't get, have not gotten made yet. And then I wrote like a ton of TV pilots. Cool, man. Did you, did you, and, and I didn't even say the name of your new Netflix movie, which uh, is called The Wrong Missy. Yeah, the wrong Missy. The wrong Missy. And it comes out when? The 14th? Well, the, this comes out 13th. the 14th. And it comes, so it came out yesterday. It came out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, watch it now because it's fucking hilarious. It's got David Spade, Rob Schneider, uh, fucking homeboy Lauren Nick. Lapkiss, who plays Missy, Dude, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that she's was incredible. She's great. intense. Yeah, she, she's, yeah. she's intense. I, I, I didn't really know her. I knew of her and was from like, crashing. Like, familiar with her. And then when I saw her, I was like, oh, my God. Like, what she was doing. Yeah. That, she just went for it, dude. That's when yeah. you know you're committed to comedy is when you just put yourself out there. And, like, yeah. for those of you who want to do comedy, like, you have to put yourself out in so many ways. I mean, just being on stage. But in terms of, like, it's like when you saw Will Ferrell at Old School streaking. That dude's <laughs> fucking naked. You know what I mean? Like, that's always, like, you have to just go out and... <laughs> Be look like shit. Yeah, you know, like you can't you can't be like, oh my makeup or I yeah, don't, this not, isn't a good angle. Not in my comedy, Nick. <laughs> not you, Steve. I just saw his dick right before the podcast started on accident. Like I've seen this guy's dick so many times. Yeah, so many. I bet I can't. I can't even imagine. I remember when I first saw Jackass live. I did. I, t I think I told you this, Steve. When uh, you guys were at the Mint. Oh Costco. fuck, dude! I remember. I was that. at that show. Dude, I remember that, dude. What was going down at the Mint? Oh my god! It was it was god. my it was my old door. It's like an intimate jazz club, <laughs> <laughs> and these fucking dudes. Ah, uh, dude, I, I think it, it holds like a hundred and fifty people, maybe. If it, that. It, dude, Spike Jones was there that night. We, it was my old "Don't Try This at Home" tour. Yeah, so what I'm, went down? I, I'm slashing my tongue with broken glass, bleeding yeah, all over blood myself, everywhere. stapling my ball sack to my leg. Fucking, I remember, I remember, we man ran. <laughs> across the stage and dove head first into my balls called it <laughs> yep, the, the wee battering that. ram <laughs> and then you guys either did or showed the vomit uh, i mean i definitely barfed <laughs> that was my yeah. thing i was professionally yeah, it was, bulimic it was fucking insane asylum it was it was amazing though it was great. oh well dude thanks man um <laughs> so did, did you over. did you have a hand in writing the wrong missy did you contribute to that no, I didn't. That was a pre-existing script, and then I just came along and just did my shit. So it's it's nice to be an actor and not have to produce or write wow. anything. Where you, 
where you can just kind of fuck around. But it sucked because I we couldn't we I couldn't get tan or any sun or anything. So my our character was so pale and so I just look like a fucking Gargamel's dick. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a hand in writing Uncut Gems, or did you only do comedy? Oh, my God, that movie's oh, fucked God, up, dude. No part of that. Jesus dude. Christ. <laughs> no, I, play, I played the gem. <laughs> I was in a gem outfit. Like Sandler put me in this little gem outfit. Dude, fucking. that fucking, oh, my God, that movie. That movie is insanity. And, and I remember just, when I saw that in the theater, I was like, Non-stop anxiety, like yeah. immediately. Oh my Within, god! Like the first two minutes, I was couldn't breathe. I felt I like, like I was coked out the whole movie. Right. Yeah, it was like a cokey thing. I felt wildly uncomfortable the whole time, but I could not stop watching it. Well, after the movie was over, I went to the bathroom and I was like passing some dude that I didn't even know. We both looked at each other and we're like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's fucking heavy, dude. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, no, it's super intense. But yeah, I went. It's, it's funny that you said like it felt like a cocaine thing because it do, it did feel like that. And it's funny. I don't know. You probably had this happen where I just assume everyone's done cocaine, <laughs> so that when I talk to people and I'm like, yeah, it's like when you're on cocaine, and they're like, what? Yeah, like, yeah, like when you're on cocaine, you know. And they're like, yeah, I've never done cocaine. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's what it's like. Anyway. Dude, I, I, that's, that happens to me all the time. I would have lived if somebody bet me whether, like, you know, like, uh, I bet you Nick Swords and, like, didn't write his. Because, dude, like, your, your fucking shit was funny, dude, in, in The Wrong Missy, dude. I thought, I was like, I, I thought that you had to have been totally in charge of what you were doing because it just. Well, I, I change my lines constantly. Right. I'm okay. always changing my lines. I don't even know the last time I've done anything that was. Hard, hard to the script verbatim. What I would say Blades of Glory was probably one of the only ones where it, I read, I did the actual lines verbatim. Well, that one was uh, in good shape. I mean, it seems like you'd be the best <laughs> writer for yourself, right? Like, you don't want anybody else writing for you? Well, yeah, and also a lot of people hire me solely for that purpose. If they're, you know, it's to be, for me to bring what I bring and my voice, you know? So they'll be like, oh, yeah, just do whatever, you know, because they know I'm, I'm not going to make it worse, you know, and I'll, I'll try a million things. I can do 10 variations on one line. I mean, that's all when I produce for Sandler, I'm running back and forth going like, try this, try this and uh, just trying to make it, you know, as funny as possible. So, you know, unless you're doing like a Paul Thomas Anderson movie where it's like, fucking that script is in stone or like Tarantino. I wouldn't fuck with that, you mm -hmm. know? What's the difference between making a movie for Netflix and making the movie for, like, a traditional studio? It's so much better, dude. They I just mean, let the studio you do your system, thing. The studio system is a lot of people are paranoid about their jobs. So you get a lot of notes. So for those of you watching this, just fucking, it's insane. So, you know, you'll be filming a movie for a major studio, and then you'll have executives being telling Adam Sandler, being like, I don't know, I don't think that's going to work. And Adam will be like, no, it'll work. And they're like, ah, I don't think it's funny. Maybe just, maybe, maybe cut that out. And Adam's like, no, I'm not fucking cutting it out. That's fucking f funny. <laughs> and they're like, no, nah, I don't know. And it's just some dickhead. And it's so like that type of shit. So Netflix, they'll show up and they don't have to worry about an opening weekend. So when you have a studio movie, you have to, if the movie doesn't open big and it bombs, like you're fucked. So with Netflix, there's no pressure of that because it's already there. So they're just chill. They're like, Oh, yeah, that's funny. Anyway, do you guys have, want popcorn? We have popcorn. <laughs> and, like, they just kick it. Everyone there is cool as shit. So there's no pressure on anybody, and that's, like, the best. And that's what, you know, it's such a relief for Adam to not have to fucking deal with that. You know? What island were you on when you filmed the movie? Fantasy island. <laughs> yeah, got it. Uh, um, we were on uh, Oahu. Actual Hawaii, dude. That's killer. Yeah. Yeah, Hawaii is the best, dude. Fucking love it. How long? When did you guys rap? We shot February, March. So I rapped. Like a year yeah. ago. Yeah, it was like a year ago today. We rapped for a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, you so, so uh, what, what the fuck's going on in Minnesota? It's just a crazy Minnesota weather. It's The Midwest is so fucking, uh, such a headache, dude. It'll be like. 30 and then the next day it'll be like 70 and then the next day it'll snow 
and then it'll be like 40 and then it'll rain and then it'll be like 80 it's just like and, and dude, just, you don't know what you're gonna get ha- it's like god damn it have we really not talked about the minnesota vikings this whole time dude like <clears throat> I was uh, so I talk, excited. I talk about it all the time. I, I don't even know what to do with football, dude. I, it's just, this whole year is fucking insane. <laughs> Did you? And every and it's insane every day. Yeah. Like the murder hornet was like just even the, <laughs> nobody was, nobody was even phased. Kim Jong Un might be dead. There's fucking aliens. <laughs> nobody even cares. Nobody even knows what's going on. It's just every day. It's like oh yeah, there's a sex tape. Uh, Bigfoot. <laughs> He released a sex tape. People would be like, all right. Oh, yeah, if you fart, you can get AIDS. All right, yeah, okay. Like, you have no fucking idea what's going to happen anymore. Oh, my God. And, and dude, every time I do one of these uh, podcasts, like, I, I get so excited to make my, my thumbnail for the, for the fucking, for the episode, and I make the logo different for every guest. And uh, I try, yeah, to, I try to, I try to cater it to the guest. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do for you? Like, fucking Minnesota Vikings, dude. Maggie at the yeah. fucking Minnesota Vikings Wild Ride Podcast logo. So, <laughs> what it, what, what, what's it going to do? No, the Minnesota Vikings football is important to you. I like. I feel yeah. like. I feel like kind of like. Hey, I have this experience. Not not so much anymore because now I'm in a food program. But like, I got in real trouble with sugar, and at the end of every meal, it would just come over me like a fucking tidal wave. I would turn into a werewolf with sugar cravings, and I would have this negotiation with myself, like, oh, I want to have dessert, but no, I really shouldn't. Oh, but I want to, and then I'd be like, oh, but I'm gonna fucking hate myself if I do. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll do it. And then I eat like a huge dessert or two or three, and then I'm just fucking in, just, I'm just in shame. I'm in shame, and I'm beating myself up. And then I start to think, you know what? I don't even think it's about the dessert. I think that there's some kind of perverse reward or pleasure that I'm seeking in an opportunity to beat myself up. Like, it's actually the shame that I'm addicted to. And I, and I bring that up because I feel like you're addicted to the disappointment of the loss. Like, you seem to be so engaged when the bite... Bike... I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, like, like it, it hurts you so so deeply when the Vikings lose, I wonder, like, is it like, is, is your love of football? No. Like the, the, the answer is no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not addicted to losing. Nobody's addicted. I don't want to lose secretly in the back of my fucking mind. I I'm not saying, looking at a football game like a cake. <laughs> like a taste, like, like losing is a tasty reward. <laughs> That's going to fill and jizz cream in my mouth. No, that's oh not how God. it works. That's fantastic. I'm, I mean, I'm addicted to football, but I want to <laughs> win. Like, I, I want to win bad. Like, I want to win so bad, and I'm so obsessed with it that my sister on her second marriage, it was she picked a date that was September 18th, I believe, and it was a Vikings-Packers game, and I skipped her wedding and went to the game. <laughs> Because I said she's gonna get a divorce, but the Vikings are gonna win, <laughs> and she got a, she got a divorce two months later, and the Vikings won. Epic. So what's it gonna do? Yeah. To you, what's it gonna do to you if the Vikings are playing in an empty stadium? Well, the only thing that sucks is that we had a really good draft, and this is a big year for us. And I feel like you know, let's just say we go, we play. There's no fans. There's always gonna be an asterisk next to it so that's what's kind of frustrating is it won't be you know it'll always be like ah yeah that was that season where yeah (laughs) all right so you know you want to be at full strength so that part kind of sucks that's what that's what i'm most uh, like angry about is if we have this you know balls out year it's always going to be that fucking asterisk of like "Eh, well virus yeah yeah (laughs) it's a it's a fuck it's a it's a motherfucker Do I totally take back everything I said about it, being addicted to losing? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Was the last man, no. Everything was going so well until then. <laughs> you know what is fucking nuts though is how, and this is another thing I've learned about diet: how fucking psycho addictive sugar is. Oh my god! And how your body, like if if when I cut out, I would cut out sugar. So when I cut out dairy, I cut out a lot of you know like desserts and shit like that. And your body craves it so fucking psychotic. So gnarly. That it's it's like wild, dude. And I've done fucking every drug. 
And sugar, to me, it was like, yeah. I would start to really lose my mind. Dude, there's like you know 10 grams I mean? of sugar in a glass of milk. Like, how fucking crazy is that? Yeah, I, I it's, did. It's crazy. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's not up. the same as drugs, but it's like, it is a weird kind yeah. of, oh, I need this. Dude, I, I, had to, I had to fucking go full 12 step on it, dude. I'm like fucking seven months. He was having the kitchens at the comedy clubs open up at like 2 a.m. just to make them like a double brownie <laughs> fucking vanilla ice cream. That's not true. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> I know, dude. Oh I do my not one, God. but two. Dude, I used to be like super hardcore vegan. Like, like I was right there with you. Like, yeah, fuck dairy. And the thing, dude, the sugar, like, it, 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 the sugar addiction just fucking was more important to me than whether I fucking believed in dairy dairy or not okay it's i'm like give me a fucking brownie <laughs> and the crazy thing Make is like he doesn't gain weight like if i ate as no, much as he like no, i do i do i just fucking right. it's around it's just the spare tire <laughs> it's fucking you gain all all the all of it back in your cubic <laughs> <laughs> for some reason yeah. it just goes right uh, right to your butt but yeah i, I want but yeah before before we get done I, I i have to say and i wish i said it sooner how how much like i appreciate that when i did my first comedy special that like I, I, I sent it to you, and and you watched it, and you gave me notes, and again for my second comedy special, like uh, you, you chipped. Yeah, the, the second one you chipped away at it on your tour bus, I think for a while. Fuck tour bus. Yeah. Tour bus theater tour. What? How dope is that? It's it's dope, but uh, well, first of all, yeah, I'm proud of you, dude. I'm always here for you, and uh, yeah, a, a tour bus is another level, dude. Of fucking. <laughs> I remember the biggest tour I did. I did 55 cities and I was gone for three and a half months on a bus. And I remember, never forget it, two weeks into it, I was already exhausted. And I called my agent and I was like, how many more cities do we have left? He's like, well, 48. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. And I turned to my opener and I was like, are you ready to lose your mind? And he was like, yep. And that's what we did. I made it like a couple more weeks and then we, the alcohol, we started having booze on the bus and then shit just got what fucking, it was awesome, dude. But it was, it took years off my life. Just, <laughs> just, a, just the fact, just, just touring alone and waking up in new cities and time zones and altitudes and just, it, it was just, it's fucking insane. I don't know how, do you feel like this? Like when you watch like a documentary about a band and all like that crazy shit and how much crazier it is when they, well, they'll go on a tour bus for fucking like two and a half years back in the day or like two years. Yeah. And they'll just go and like nonstop and there's like five of them on the Yeah, bus. but I wouldn't mind doing it if I were the Beatles or fucking Motley Crue. Yeah, the Beatles weren't on a fucking tour bus <laughs> fucking three years. Right. They like blew up immediately. They went on like the Ed Sullivan show and they were like, eh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Everybody was like. <laughs> and then they fucking were like on a golden thrones and shit yeah i'm talking like randy uh, fucking we were we did a gnarly bus shit we did a tour bus through europe like the best uh, time of my life 20, oh that what must have been sick dude. 2016 it yeah. was uh, we did 26 cities in 28 days Dude, and uh, holy shit! And, and then, I think I remember you posted. Yeah, it was like a crazy two-story tour bus. The last person on it was fucking Justin Bieber. It was just me and Scott, and uh, we, we were both in a sex program. But at that time, we had just both fallen off the wagon, so we were just like. <laughs> well, that, was, that was my that was my last run of uh, fucking acting out. Yeah, on, on the way there. On the way to Europe, I had sex on the airplane. He's a fucking Mile High Club legend. In, so I had sex in the seat what? on the airplane, and then Steve posted it, and then I just had everybody coming up to me, and it was just fucking on. Dude, straight up. Like, oh my like, God. like you're, you're not in the Mile High Club if you go on the airplane with your girlfriend and have sex with your girlfriend. Like... I, I count it, like, way back in the Wild Boys days, I met a chick uh, at the gate and humped her on the airplane. I counted that because I, cause she was a stranger. But, dude, he fucking met her, like, <clears throat> after sitting down. She just happened to sit next to him. She was in the seat next to him. So hot. 
and like the plane took off, and this was like this fucking uh, no, no, no. British yeah. Airways where, where like there's it's like a little cubby with two seats in it, and they just fuck whoop. Plane took off. They turn off the lights, and he's boning her. Good. God. I know, that dude. I mean, the it only was a red eye. The only, yeah. yeah, it was a red eye, and the only way that turned into a brown eye. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you could be more of a Mile High Club legend is if it was with a stewardess, or I should say, sorry, flight attendant. Yeah, dude, that's fucking. Wild. Plus, she was so hot, many, dude. She so was hot. in the sex program too. Yeah. How many fucking programs? <laughs> dude, I, are you in the space program? <laughs> <laughs> if you count, if you how many are left? If you, if you count drugs and alcohol as separate, then I'm in for barreling for number five. Just heading barreling towards number five. What's the fifth one? <laughs> With the spending. Spending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spending, I fucking, uh, I soothe by fucking buying shit, dude. I'm an Amazon. What's all you have left? It's fucking, dude, it's- Amazon Anonymous. <laughs> 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 Every day is fucking Christmas at my house, dude. Fuck, I, that, yeah. It's bad, dude. Do you get this thing? I When I started buying shit online and like on apps and stuff, so when I'm on Instagram, I'll just get. Oh my god, I fall for it every I time. I usually buy. I fall for it. Every time. <laughs> they, they know they what know I want. They know exactly what the fuck <laughs> I want. And they just send me like, "Oh hey, what about what about this?" Wait, but dude, I'll tell like, you. Oh, I'll tell you a secret. I bought this on a fucking. <laughs> oh, fucking dude. I bought like a three hundred dollars worth of Mandalorian <laughs> shit. Dude, I got I gotta let you in on a secret. Is that the fucking when you when you fall for the sponsored Instagram ad? That that the, it doesn't fucking come right away. So when when you when when you're interested in what Instagram's selling you with the sponsored ad, just fucking copy and paste it and plug it into Amazon. You get the same fucking thing, Prime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Same fucking oh. shit right away. Yeah, because I, I tried to order that toothbrush thing that you like the mouth guard you put in your mouth and it brushes your teeth for you. It's just so fucking hit or miss, dude, with the sponsored Instagram. It never shit, came. Dude. It fucking it'll it'll never come or it'll come like fucking six months later. All my <clears throat> shit comes right away. Oh fuck. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, so fuck you. Guys. You're richer than Steve is, so they know that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I have hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a Did you have a tour lined up for the the year and it got canceled, or did you have anything planned? Yeah, dude, I had a whole thing. I was so mad. My whole fall was going to be stacked. I had all these theater dates. I had like twenty five dates. Oh my god! Imagine Motley um, Crew. Everything. I had, I had people doing the artwork. I had all this shit, man. And now it's just. So what I might do is I might record a special in Minnesota at some of my home clubs splice it together and just sell it on my website and then like retire i don't think i have another special in me after you've this. said that as long as i've known you dude you've said as I long as long that. as i've known you you've said dude i don't think <laughs> i have another special i mean how many you got now it's fucking hard i have five uh uh-huh. it's fucking hard though to like once you like burn a special you you always think it's the end oh uh, dude it's 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 it's, it's it's, I had this conversation with Demi Lovato about how fucking m- musicians, they go on tour. All anybody wants to hear is the hits. Don't bother us with new shit. And, but with comedy, it's the exact same fucking opposite. It's the opposite. <laughs> like, the what do you word. got? What do you, what, do you, what do you got? You fucking, what are you going to tell me the same shit, dude? Come on, give me something new. It's like, this is fucking... I know, I was always jealous of musicians because <laughs> of that. They always hate, they always fucking hate it. I'm like... You're so lucky. Dude. <laughs> no, dude. I'm Set like to write life. a banger joke, like a really good, like you know, even just coming up with like a really strong closer, you know, which is your final bit. I mean, to come up with a banger, dude, it's fucking hard, man. Well, I remember when we I did that show in Hollywood, where I was doing the cocaine stories, and you came out on stage. You said, "Guys, I just want you to know, I'm fucking just trying out some new material, so I'm totally gonna fucking, you know, it's gonna suck a dick, it's gonna bomb." And it was the most fucking genius shit, dude. So, you know, power power oh, to you man. for for uh, for your humility. But uh, your shit rules, thanks, dude. Bud. Your shit rules, dude. And I love you, man. I love you too, Steve. Yeah, you can call me any fucking time. I'll fucking eat a birthday cake with you. We'll just order like fucking five <laughs> wedding cakes and just melt down. We'll just go. <laughs> That's our last resort. <laughs> Yeah, Scott dude. can fuck the cake. <laughs> It'll be fucking great, <laughs> dude. I I love it, man. I don't think we 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 really need to keep you any longer, dude. I fucking just I just love you, dude. I I enjoyed your your movie watching on Netflix. It's called The Wrong Missy. 
fucking, Thanks, uh, man. you know, like pray, pray for the football gods to fucking, to, to, to <laughs> smile on the Minnesota Vikings. You know, don't fuck with dairy. Is that the thumbnail right there? He just you did. You know, uh, I, I, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, dude. I know, and the comedy gods too. Let's get back to making people laugh, dude. Yeah, dude, for sure. Let's get back to fucking shoving things up our ass and fucking making people laugh. <laughs> Yeah, and dude, let me know when you're back in L.A. And uh, fucking, you know, let's tie our dicks together, dude. Done. <laughs> let's do it. I'll save my pubes. All right, dude. Love you, bro. I love you, too. Later, Bye, dude. Scott. Good to see yeah, you, Yeah, good dude. to see you. Hell yeah. Later. You. Party. Yeah. All right, I got something else to admit, okay? When we recorded this with Nick... We asked him to uh, use his, his phone with a voice memo recording so we could get better audio from his end. And then after that, we asked him to send over the voice memo. But he had a lot of trouble figuring out how to send this larger file. And it, it was uh, probably the most annoying thing that I've put him through for, I don't know, ever. Yeah, ever. So let's show Nick some love. That was such a great podcast. He's such a funny guy. Please screenshot this. If you're still hanging in there, screenshot this and tag him on Instagram. Let him know how hilarious he was. And maybe you could apologize on my behalf for, uh, yeah, putting him through that. It was tough. I mean, and I kept bugging him and bugging him, and uh, finally we got it. I think the audio sounds great. Thank you for listening. And Street Team, you know what to do. God, just love you guys. Thank you. Woo! Yeah! <clears throat>